Homer, I'm the curator of the Turner Dodge House, and this time of year is kind of a magical time for us because it's a holiday open house, and you'll get a chance after the program today to have a tour of the house with Ron Turner, who is one of the relatives of the James and Marion Turner family, and um, a descendant of Richard Turner, and are quite an authority now on the family and the history. And, um, tonight, um, because of the fact that we're going to have this wonderful Depression era glass uh, display in the dining room for the Holiday Open House, we invited Marcus Burkholder to come and, and to show his display and give us a little bit of a talk about it because it's getting to be extremely popular. And the thing about it is that probably at the turn of the century or in the 1930s when the, this was um, here. It would not have been set out on the dining room table for Christmas. It was a five or ten cent piece um, for a plate or a cup or something. But now it's quite treasured and extremely valuable. And uh, Marcus will tell you about how he got involved with it. And um, some of you will probably recognize or remember Marcus Burkholder from being the principal of Geyer for in uh, part of the Lansing School District for over 30 years. And uh, but now he's having fun collecting. Right collecting wonderful pieces of um, pressed air glass, and you can imagine in the period of time that he did it, he became quite an expert on it. So I'm sure you'll enjoy the program tonight, and for people who are watching, uh, I hope that you'll come to the house um, during this month. Uh, we're open from Wednesday through Sunday from 1 to 4, and it'll be through the 21st. Uh, on the Saturdays, we'll have Santa Claus here from 1 to 4, and that means bring your camera, bring your children and grandchildren. And a story hour at 2 o'clock on Sundays and wonderful music and performers all during the weekend. So I hope you'll come down and see it for real. <laughs> Marcus. Thank you, Liz. Uh, let me first of all dispel any ideas that I'm an expert in this thing. Oh. In the first place, experts are what? Drips under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't even want to, I don't even want to be classified that way. And we have some experts in the room, I think. Some... some uh, antique experts. I do have a collection of Royal Lace Green Glass. I purposely put this in here. So I want to show you that we use it. We set our table at Christmas time in the green glass. This is a Royal, it's called Royal Lace Pattern. And it was made in Martinsburg, Virginia. And uh, the company, you know, it's, it's old age, that's what does it. I forget the company's names and so on and so forth right off the bat, but it'll come to me and we'll talk about it a little bit. And uh, it is a joy to be here and to also get acquainted with Ron Turner again. Ron and I worked in the school district many long years ago. We've been retired, both of us, for quite a while. This is a, it's a piece of glass, or it is glass. But I started collecting because one of my staff members brought me one of these one time. She said, here, I know you're into antiques a bit and so on and so forth. I want you to have this plate. In fact, I believe she brought four of them. And that started the adventure. Since then, we've been all over the country. We have sent to a lot of magazines, a lot of dealers, that kind of thing, collecting the pieces. It's um, Hazel Atlas is what it was. Um, it's, it was a very cheap glass. Now this is, they, people commonly call it depression glass. That's not exactly the, I mean, that describes this. 
but it's not all that this was because there was a lot of glass made back in Depression times. And a lot of it was hand blown and it was hand finished. They sanded it, they rubbed it down, they did whatever with it, and they etched it by hand. Then along came a new mechanized process with some very cheap glass. It's a, not a, an expensive type of glass at all. And they were able to put it into a mold. And they made those molds so that they had some special designs on them. They have a ridge around here, they have this scalloped edge, they've got the lacy pattern down in the bottom. And one mold would make hundreds and thousands of pieces. So they started producing this stuff in the 1930s, and it was extremely inexpensive. You could buy a whole set for two dollars and a quarter. Now this particular pattern um, comes in four colors. It comes in blue, pink, crystal, and green. There's a bit of amethyst too that's with it from time to time. But you would go to the movies and uh, if you were had your quarter, you could get two tickets and a tumbler. And that was the way people started collecting it. Or you might stop at the gas station and they might give you, you know, three dollars worth of, well I don't suppose you paid three dollars worth of gas back then. Most of us I think paid a dollar. But you might get a berry bowl with it because it was extremely inexpensive and it they would give, uh, furniture factories would give a whole set to anybody that was interested in buying some mo so much furniture. You buy a room full of furniture, buy a dining room set, we'll give you a set of dishes. And then it just passed down from people from one hand to another. And your mother probably has some, probably some of you had, a lot of you have pieces at home. And it, uh, you know, didn't, big deal. Ten cents worth of glass, you know, they got it for wedding gifts because it was a quarter. Your mother may have explained that to you somewhere along the way. But since then, people have started all of a sudden collecting it. And when they start collecting it, it then becomes rather valuable. I have in this collection every piece that they made in this pattern and in this color, with the exception of one piece. They made three-legged bowls like this. And they made them with a straight edge, and here's a candlestick they made the same way, the straight edge. They made it with a ruffled edge, and they made it with a rolled edge. And I have never seen the rolled edge. I ask her to say, when he's out hunting, the antiques, you know, look for that rolled edge bowl, because that's one I would certainly would be interested in getting. When you start collecting, like I say, it was rather inexpensive. You could pick up a plate for ten dollars, not unusual. Some of the pieces, because they get broken easily, tumblers. This tumbler today would probably command a hundred to twenty-five to one hundred and fifty dollars. The royal lace pattern is kind of distinctive. It's got a lot of a lot of lacy things around the top, but on the bottom of every piece, you'll see a four-leaf clover. So in any piece that you pick up, you'll find that. You'll find that the edges are rough because they were molded and they were not polished. It was nothing like that. They made, and we have a grill plate, which there are several of them on display out here I believe. They have the lines in it to separate food. They made a dinner plate. They made a luncheon plate, they made a bread and butter plate, they made a berry bowl, they made a cream soup bowl, they made four different sizes of tumblers, cups and saucers, the four different pitchers. So it's been a challenge to try to, to find all of the pieces. And that's what we've done, is to just travel around the country finding pieces. Now, like I say, I'm not an expert. That's about as much as I can tell you about depression glass, but I would like to try to answer questions that you might have. If somebody came up with anyone today said they couldn't be here tonight, what's this? You know what that is? The pattern? What is it? Yeah. Sunflower. 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 You're right. You're right. 
And what is that, a footed that's cake a fun, plate? That's a sunflower cake plate. Yeah, cake and plate. the first thing you want to do if you want to get interested in something like this is pick up a copy of Gene Florence, is the, he's the expert on this. And you can just hunt through here until you can come to sunflower. And they'll have pieces there and they'll give you some kind of idea. This is a nine-door <coughs> book. The cake plate they say is uh, in green is worth $15. That's what they're saying now. In 94. That was in 94. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I did have mine evaluated. And he came back with uh, about $7,200 mm -hmm. for the entire set. Yeah. And we're talking about nickel and dime stuff, you know. It was, I was a depression era baby back when I was little. You know, you got this stuff for free. You went to the show, you got a piece of glass. But as you begin to put it together, then that begins to make it worthwhile. And the interesting thing is, is that even at garage sales, everybody's got Gene Florence's book. So they don't sell it for a nickel or dime for a garage sale. <laughs> yeah, you can buy his book. Um, oh, you gotta have, have money. But yeah, there is a, there's still a lot of it out there. There's still a lot of it out there, but it's getting harder and harder to find. You don't find many big collections any longer. And I would guess that I have as big a collection as anybody in the United States. I guess you can say that if you, nobody disputes it. <laughs> so, uh, I have service for 13, every piece that they made, with the exception of the one bowl. I don't have, this is the rolled edge, I don't have that bowl in this design. Other than that, I've got it all. Is it the only pattern you collect? Yeah. It's the only one my wife will let me collect. <laughs> I do have some uh, doglewood. That's okay. um, in the pink. Mm -hmm. I like that in the pink. Okay. Well, do you use the internet much? Pardon? Do you use the internet? Have you tried to find I've it? I've been more? on the internet, yeah, hunting it on the internet. Uh, uh, I thought I could find it. How many of you are, are familiar with Replacements Limited? Several of you. If you want any China, or anything, that's the place to go. And they do have this pattern. I get a copy every month of everything mm -hmm. that they have in green royal lace. And, but it's not been a, they haven't found that one bowl yet. Still looking. Do they charge a lot too? It seems like a company like that might. It's surprising, I don't think so. No. I mean, uh, probably the place would be 20 $25 now. Huh. So it's not it's not an exorbitant amount, mm -hmm. but it's very they're very interesting because you can call them and talk to them on the phone and describe your pattern, and they'll think about it for a little while and then they'll come back and say I think this is what you've got and yes we have it. We went down. It's a no. I don't what I don't what what does uh, replacements limited conjure up in your mind? Mm -hmm. You know. Big warehouse. A something. big warehouse <laughs> with dust this thick on everything. But well, we stopped in to see what it was, and it's an elegant place. Mm -hmm. It's all done with chandeliers and mirrors mm -hmm. and everything all over. And but they have every pattern, and if you talk to them about what you want, they'll go back and they'll find it. We asked them about something that was, um, well, it was some of the later depression wasn't depression glass, but it was some of the later stuff that was bought at grocery stores. You know where you. Made your twenty-five dollar right. purchase, yeah. and you got every a plate. Every week you got a plate. <laughs> yeah, every week you got something different. Yeah. They have those patterns. Mm. So if anything is you're missing, that's Where a place to contact. Located? They're located in North Carolina, North Carolina. outside Nashville. Yeah. Okay. Do you know if they carry uh, patterns that might have been made in other countries? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Mm. But it's a good place to go. Well, they're making reproductions of these glass depression areas. To the best of our knowledge, this mm -hmm. one has not been reproduced. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, I don't At think least, well, uh, yeah. I think it may the blue may have been reproduced, but you can mm -hmm. tell because of the color. It's not the cobalt blue that was original. Oh, it's more of a blue green. Mm -hmm. But yes, they have bought some of the molds and have tried to do it with some of the other patterns. Is there like how many more patterns? Like 10, 20? <laughs> I don't know how many patterns, patterns they must have made. This book is yeah. full of them. That's all it is. It's like, just depression glass patterns. Oh. You know, I mean, 
the opening of it. And somebody was asking on the way in tonight about ruby red. That's a, a glass from that era, too. That's anchor hawking. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they're talking about the square plates? Well, they made several pieces. Well, yeah, ruby red was a color. Mm -hmm. They made a lot of different pieces. Mm -hmm. in, but, um. but they would be very valuable today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I say, I started my collection when uh, a teacher gave me those pieces. So I started looking, and it's, it's fun. Every time you go to town, you pick up all the local <coughs> antique shops, and you go in and you bum around looking for something in particular. I found a cookie jar we've got in the window out there. Uh, the cookie <coughs> jar I found, uh, I believe I found that in Indiana. But I found the lid in Bancroft, Michigan. <laughs> so you, you have to just keep your eyes open because you pick up little things that, you know, you didn't even understand what you were doing exactly. And of course, I didn't understand what I was doing, except I liked it. What year was that that you started? Do you know? That was probably about 1985. What were you paying? Pardon? What were you paying for it then when you'd find it? Oh. <coughs> it's it's kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you would find it and they didn't know what they had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once in a while you'll find it at a garage sale or something like that and they're, they think, well, you know, it's, we've been told that depression glass is just, you know, it's old cheap glass and your mother handed it down to you and you say, well, yeah, this is, well, that's nice, it's mom's, I'll keep it. But a lot of people just threw them away. Mm -hmm. And so they put them on a room and sale for 10 cents a piece or something like that. Mm -hmm. But because glasses are a little hard to find, they're, um, they get to be very, very expensive. No. That's because people used them and they got broken. Yes, they did. Yeah. And you had the same thing with the, they the raised pictures. They raised their kids with them. You know, the handles yeah. are gone. The ice lips are gone. Yeah. This one has a, this, I don't know whether it's a, deformed a little bit or not on the ice lip. There's not much space up there. <laughs> a lot of them are deformed. I mean, those were the oh. imperfections in the cheap glasses. That, uh, they did a remarkable job of coming up. You know, this is quite a, I think this is quite an intricate pattern mm -hmm. for just oh, yeah. pouring it into a mold and having it come out as well as it did. And, you know, mold would make, I think back then they made a thousand of them with one mold. So you run a whole bunch of green glasses today and Tomorrow you'd change color or something, and, but uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a fast market. You didn't make a whole lot of money doing mm -hmm. that. Not as much as you do today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you like to have a set of glass in your shop? <laughs> yeah. How long did they make that? About Just a five few years. years or a long time? It was only about five years, from oh. 35 to 40. Mm -hmm. That era, maybe 41. Why'd they stop? Why did they stop? Yeah. Well, it fell out of favor after. Oh. I mean, it was junk. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what it was. It was just cheap junk. But you could get, at that time, you could get a table that set looked pretty good for not much money. I mean, you compare that with trying to buy china, fine china, and it was a, definitely a, a different story. Well, but, a lot of it was because it was a cheap industry. And then when World War II came along, the labor industry picked up and the labor market went down. I mean, they had to have been paying the workers just pennies to make that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's true. You can imagine yeah, right. working at a furnace mm -hmm. all day, pressing glass. Yeah, I liken mm -hmm. it to, um, and I wonder, you know, here we are, we're collecting it. We spend lots of money, we spend lots of time collecting it and so on and so forth when it was really, and I wonder what's going to happen. 50 years from now, when people find these plastic bottles with water in them, they say, they say my mom and dad paid $5 for this bottle of water. So, you know, it's probably a passing, a passing type of thing. I was just, uh, just... Well, I've always wondered if people someday collect Tupperware. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It was just out of MSU, I worked the football games out there, and, a half liter of water out there is five dollars, and the only thing I don't dislike about it is I don't know why I wasn't smart enough to think about putting water in a bottle and selling it. 
<laughs> are there other or any patterns you want to look at or anything like that? We can help you. If you want to get into the business, if you want to get into collecting, and if you have some, you know, keep it. Keep it. It's only going to get more valuable. And uh, if you decide you just have to throw it away, I'll give you my phone number. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have it thrown my way if you're... But it is a, it's a, it's a fun thing to collect. It really is. But if you're going to collect, you need to get something like this. Gene Florence sort of wrote the, the book on it. And it just talks and tells you in there about what it is and what you ought to pay for it. And, you know, it's just like everything else you're looking. If you find a good buy, you pick it up. The other thing is, that is dangerous about it is that once you start one collection, you may start another one after you yeah. <laughs> yes, We've just decided kind of we addictive. might go green. <laughs> <laughs> just decided we might go green. <laughs> Green's a little less common than pink. Is that right? Um, Yes, probably. In fact, uh, the yellow may be the most common. Okay. Yeah, I find the yellow sometimes even I can still find it at Goodwill or Volunteers of America or something, you know, just right. walking through. Usually yellow is what I see, sort of the amber colored. Yeah. It's a, that's a very popular one. Mm -hmm. But uh, like, it could be addictive. I have started a collection of dogwood. I don't expect to be this extensive with dogwood. They made yes, hundreds of pieces, I think. But then I switched and started collecting uh, Nortaki China in the azalea pattern. And some of these are just really fun. It's just fun to go into a place and once in a while you make a find. Yeah. You find a piece that you don't have. Keep good records of what you have mm -hmm. <laughs> so you don't buy a lot of duplicates. <laughs> but uh, enjoy it. You can go, I know the uh, Mega Mall up there in North Lansing has several pieces of depression glass in it. Now you have to hunt for it. Nobody's got it all collected together. Do you have any depression glass in your shop? Yeah, there's a lot of it in Williamston. In Williamston there's a lot of it. Yeah, I was going to ask, what, where, where do you find is a good place to go for it? If, are there certain towns that are good for... A good place to go for it is where uh, you find that piece. <laughs> that's a, that's a, you just, you really can't predict. Yeah where it is. We were just up in New England this fall and didn't see a piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We thought that might be a good place to go to hunt. Mm -hmm. They said that there's a lot of glass up in Maine and so on, but we were up there, and particularly in Rhode Island, and didn't find any. Mm. I know there's some pieces up here to make them all. I know there's some in Williamston. I don't think they have a rolled edge bowl. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Mason is a fun place to mm -hmm. go to hunt. There are two depression glass shows in the Detroit area every year, one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, the fall one, I think, is in Dearborn, and the mm -hmm. spring one's in Madison Heights. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to the Madison Heights one. I've been to Dearborn several times. Mm -hmm. to it's the same exhibitors, usually. You know, they yeah. the same stuff. Yeah, they just do it at But at those shows, they bring only their finest stuff, you know, their oh, best, yeah. highest quality. And, but you can't find pieces the there. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a good place to pick up. Like we we collect Pink Sierra. Pink Sierra. And we got one salt and pepper shaker in one booth, mm -hmm. and another salt and pepper shaker in another booth, and then we had a set. Right. <laughs> There's the one she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's in green. And the reason we collected is because we inherited some pieces from his grandmother. Right. And then we started adding to it. Mm -hmm. She had plates and cups and saucers. Oh, and now we've added a lot of the serving juice. And you're finding the fun. <laughs> <that. laughs> yeah. And the other thing that was kind of bad about it all was that my wife decided if I was going to be hunting this stuff in the places she had to hunt something, and she started collecting cast iron bookends. <laughs> <laughs> it's very heavy to bring home. Because <laughs> I have a brother in law that collects uh, Griswold iron. Cast iron skillets and oh, stuff. No. And when we go together, we have to, we have to take the truck. Here we are. Do you charge an extra for mileage? We take the yeah. We take the truck because we know it's going to be heavy coming back. Yeah, it's a, what what is the dogwood that you know? Is it a pattern or is it? It's a, a pattern. Mm -hmm. I think I've got a pattern. I think I've got it here too. 
Some of those patterns are really beautiful. They are. There's a blow up of the, the pattern. Oh. No, it doesn't matter. There's a cake plate that the family has always talked about that I've never seen. Because we don't know what happened to it. But it was, oh. it was a little three footed cake plate, uh -huh. and it was pink. Yeah. <laughs> And we just had some leaves. I don't recall any flowers. Yeah, just, uh, just mm -hmm. some leaves. Were they long? Well, there's a lot. Of... Here, this, I like this book. This is Warman's Depression Glass book because he's got a thumbnail of all the patterns in the front mm -hmm. and has them all identified. Mm -hmm. So you can take a look down there and see. You see anything there that? Mm -hmm. You wondered how many? You wondered how many patterns there were? Oh my gosh. <laughs> there are several. No, it was more spread out than that. I've had a lot of people show me something that's favorite of theirs, and they call it yeah. carnival glass. Call carnival it. glass. Um, carnival glass is iridescent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spiral. It's usually in an orange or something like that, and yeah. it will show different colors. His mother gave us. Yes, it's, it's nine very nice. And there's a lot of colors <coughs> now. Carnival glass. It is there. Story behind and it. She got going like to the show. You know, I don't. Do you know the story behind Carnival Glass? A lot of it was made about 1910 onward, and it was sold at Carnival's. It was cheap, and yeah. it's real bright and garish and purples and reds and blues and this type of thing. And that's now very expensive too, but very desirable to collect. And that went out of, out of favor about 1920. Then again, in briefly in the 1950s, but it was just a washed out tone. Was it a mass produced? Yeah. Thing? But some of those people pieces are worth thousands, though. There's some real mm. rare, rare ones. Yeah. Mm. Carnival glass. Carnival okay. glass. Carnival glass. A lot of people have carnival glass around. You have a piece or two, you know. Your mother had one. Another one that's uh, very popular is the one that's kind of gold with a red around the top, as a general rule. The Goofus. Goofus flash, yeah. yeah. What's that that's called? Goofus? Goofus. Goofus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you saw one, it's, it's real garish, silver and gold and red, and three-dimensional. That was oh. very, very cheap, too, but that's also popular now. <laughs> Some people don't like to look at it, so, so they, peel off, it, they peel off the color. I was going to say, you see a lot of pieces the with clear. the color worn off. Mm -hmm. Is this why it's as sturdy as drinking glass? Yeah, yeah, it's just sturdy. Yeah, Liz said, you don't let that happen. This is, we're going to set the table. We're going to leave well. it here for the Christmas holidays. But uh, I just read the other day, and I was a little bit surprised to hear that. They say, put it in the dishwasher. That it will not put a film on it with the new soaps and so on and so forth. And you don't break near as many of them. This was a, a one that you had a little trouble finding because it was a cream soup bowl with two handles on it, and they got knocked off a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can find them with these missing or with these cracked. Mm -hmm. But that was a. Uh, but they're saying now you put it in the dishwasher and go. We've always hand washed it, but I guess we're going to stop that. You know, try, try one piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't move they're on. made the same way a pickle jar is made. Yeah. I mean, they, they were mass produced the same way they mass produce pickle jars. That's right. It really was. It was the cheap bottles. You find the blue bottles back at this time, which are very expensive also now. The old milk and magnesia bottles? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe a little bit before that, but a medicine bottle. Mm -hmm. And they are... Well, it's amazing what happens. You remember the uh, chocolate syrup you used to get at Bosco? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you probably threw away a small fortune. <laughs> what are you getting for a Bosco bottle right now? I don't know. I haven't seen any for a while. They're real collectible. Though. They're real collectible. What's What's unique about them? Is it? It was like a bear, and it was oh. a bank. Oh. You had chocolate syrup, and at the top had a slit on it for a bank when you got done with the chocolate syrup. And now, Shirley Temple glass mm -hmm. is another one that's very, and it really was the same. The same kind of thing as this. It was a depression and, glass. And then the Shirley Temple glasses come in Kellogg's cereal, or am I confusing <coughs> that? There was some of that. I think so. Some of the pieces came in oatmeal boxes and cereal bowl, <laughs> cereal yeah. boxes and things. The, the, big, the piece everybody tries to find is the old Shirley Temple cream pitcher. 
Yeah, but didn't it's it come with Kellogg's? I think I think it was a giveaway. Yeah, I think it was a giveaway. Was a giveaway. Was a giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. But as we as we lose some of those things, why they become valuable. <laughs> Well, if you uh, if you need any, if you want to start collecting glass, I'll be happy to share with you everything that I know. Point you to places where you can find some. There's a magazine out called Days Magazine, D-A-Z-E. It's published down in Livonia, I believe, and uh, they specialize in depression glass. That's their big thing. Do they put the same pattern in different colors? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, most of them produced uh, pink, green, and yellow, I think was the big thing. Blue, some blue. But it was a little bit more expensive to me because you had to add cobalt to the mixture. This was sand and lime and something else that they put together and heated and then they put something in to make it kind of strong. And <laughs> this has no ring <coughs> because it's not the lead, the lead crystal from the plunk. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can use it without without suffering from lead poisoning. It's, it's, it's is this the pattern, pattern that if you put it under a black light, it glows? I don't believe. I think you're or talking about Vaseline. Vaseline. Is that Vaseline, 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 Vaseline. But there's there's some kind of a yellow greenish tone about this too. So some what? places might. Yeah, I just looking at the way that looks in there. It has that glow in the dark look, look. to it. Mm. You ought to try it under black light sometime. <coughs> That'd be a good idea to see if it does. That enhances it at all. And that's because they had uranium in them. Oh. To make the green color. No, oh. that's true. Uranium. To make the green color, they used a little bit of uranium. I've never read that. They used a little of yeah. uranium. I don't even try to think of what to do with that uranium. <laughs> <laughs> After you're done blowing up the country, you can make green glass out of it. <laughs> Back in the depression glass. <laughs> Wait until the terrorists start collecting all the Vaseline glass. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, any other pressing questions? Okay. If not, Liz, I guess I'm all, right. all well, done. Thank you very much. Thank you.